Hello boys and girls. This is Professor Nelson of Electronics. On this occasion, I'm going to show you how to make a very useful project, which you'll surely be able to use in some project. For this project, we're going to need a 12 volt, 5 amp switching power supply or power supply. But if you don't have one of these, a 12 volt, 2 amp power supply will still work. Next, we're going to need a 0.8 millimeter or 0.9 millimeter enameled copper wire. Now, the first thing we're going to do is uncover our switching power supply and make some changes inside it to be able to complete our project. Okay, from the switching power supply, the component we're going to use or modify is going to be the high frequency transformer or chopper transformer. Therefore, we're going to remove it from the electronics board. Okay, now we're going to disassemble the transformer. We'll carefully remove the core. If the glue doesn't come off, you can use isopropyl alcohol to spread it on the core and wait a moment. Now we're going to add a coil to the core. Wind it in the same direction as the transformer's coils. We're going to wrap it two or three times. In our case, we're going to wrap it three times. We'll put some electrical tape on it. Now we'll replace the core. Very carefully. Done. Okay, now we solder the transformer back onto the circuit board. Let's clean it a little with isopropyl alcohol. Okay, let's move on to assembling the power supply.
We now have our modified switching power supply. Now all we have left is to solder the coil to the ends of the winding we added to the transformer. For the coil, we're going to use the same 40 centimeter wire and wrap it around a 7 millimeter drill bit. That's approximately 15 turns. Okay, now let's solder the coil. Okay, we're ready. Now let's connect the power supply and test it. We connect the power supply. First, let's test it with this clip. Nothing, it doesn't heat up. Why doesn't it heat up? Well, let's see why. Okay, guys, now for some theory. Our circuit works as follows. First, we have our transformer, which we just modified. He works with a transistor that sends him negative pulses. That is, in this case, the transistor will send us high frequency pulses. More or less like these here. Now, we add a coil to the same core or to the transformer. Two, three, or four turns. That depends on each individual. What does it matter whether it has more or fewer turns? The more turns you have, the higher the output voltage in your coil. However, the higher the voltage, the less current you can use. Therefore, it's good to balance the voltage and current. So you have to try between two and four turns. No more than four turns. Now, how does this work? These pulses that enter the primary winding also exit through the secondary windings. However, here, it comes out as direct current. But here, it won't come out as direct current. It will come out as alternating current because this is just a coil. Therefore, at a given moment, we will see the same signal, but smaller, since we will have less voltage. This same signal will go down and return. We'll have it like this. It will maintain the same frequency as the main signal and the same pulse width. When the pulse width is quite narrow, it means no energy or current is being consumed. What does that mean? It means this signal isn't going to heat anything we put in the coil. It doesn't matter if we put a very thin wire here. It won't heat because the current being used is quite small, or the pulse width is very narrow. Now, what do we do to increase the pulse width? Well, we simply connect a load. If we connect a load here, it's something that consumes energy. That is, a light bulb. For example, if I put in a light bulb, this will consume energy, and therefore the power supply will have to compensate by making the pulse much wider. Therefore, it will deliver more current. This will affect our coil. This means that this width will increase. Therefore, 
Our coil will now be able to heat any metal material we put in here. So, this would be the theory. Okay, now let's move on to practice to verify everything we talked about in the theory. Okay, guys, here you can see the pulses sent by our power supply on the oscilloscope. Which is very similar to what we just described in the theory. We have the pulses. Now our power supply is without load. When it's unloaded, we have that pulse. Let's connect a light bulb and see how the pulse width changes. That's with the light bulb. Without the light bulb. Without the light bulb. With the light bulb, you can see that the pulse width is much greater. Therefore, more current is delivered to the load. And when the load is not connected, very little current is delivered, and this is how we're going to make our coil work. Okay, let's test it. Very carefully, so that the spotlight doesn't obstruct our view of the experiment. We're going to use two 12 ohm, 5 watt resistors. Or preferably 12 ohm, 10 watt resistors. If you don't have 10 watt resistors, you can use two of this value and place them on a heat sink. Both resistors are connected in parallel, and we're going to connect them to the output of the power supply. The idea of the resistors is to force the power supply to deliver at least half of the current it can deliver. Now, let's use a switch to turn our coil on and off. Let's fit it there. Now let's heat up some things. Okay guys, this is how the video concludes. As you just saw, the equipment does work. It heats metals, but small metals. As you just saw, it's for small parts. It can heat them quickly and get them red hot. And as you just saw, it will definitely heat them up. Now, don't forget that this is just an example, so you know how induction heaters work. However, if you'd like to know more about the topic, you can write it in the comments so we can make a video about it. Okay, guys, now don't forget that if you like the video, 
A like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.